for our pursuit of Vikasit Bharat, in line with the strategy set out in the interim budget, this budget envisages sustained efforts on the following nine priorities for generating ample opportunities for all. Number one, productivity and resilience in agriculture. Number two, employment and skilling. Number three, inclusive human resource development and social justice. Four, manufacturing and services. Five, urban development. Six, energy security. Seven, infrastructure. Eight, innovation, research, and development. And nine, next generation reforms. Subsequent budgets will build on these and add more priorities and actions. A more detailed formulation will be carried out as part of the economic policy framework about which I will speak later in this speech. This budget details some of the specific actions to be initiated in the current year towards fulfillment of these priorities with potential for transformative changes. The budget also covers some of the previously made announcements with intent to strengthen them and step up their implementation for expediting our journey towards the goal of Vikasid Bharat. Priority one, productivity and resilience in agriculture. Transforming agricultural research. Our government will undertake a comprehensive review of the research, agricultural research setup to bring the focus on raising productivity and developing climate resilient varieties. Funding will be provided in challenge mode, including to the private sector. Domain experts, both from the government and outside, will oversee the conduct of such research. Release of new varieties. New 109 high-yielding and climate-resilient varieties of 32 field and horticultural crops will be released for cultivation by farmers. Natural farming. In the next two years, one crore farmers across the country will be initiated into natural farming supported by certification and branding. Implementation will be through scientific institutions and willing gram panchayats. 10,000 need-based bio-input resource centers will be established. Missions for pulses and oil seeds. For achieving self-sufficiency in pulses and oil seeds, we will strengthen their production, storage, and marketing. As announced in the interim budget, a strategy is being put in place to achieve Atmanirbharta for oil seeds such as mustard, groundnut, sesame, soybean, and sunflower. Vegetable production and supply chains. Large-scale clusters for vegetable production will be developed closer to major consumption centers. We will promote farmer producer organizations, cooperatives, and startups for vegetable supply chains, including for collection and storage and marketing. Digital public infrastructure for agriculture. Buoyed by the success of the pilot project, our government in partnership with the states, will facilitate the implementation of the digital public infrastructure in agriculture for coverage of farmers and their lands in three years. During this year, digital crop survey for Karif using the DPI will be taken up in 400 districts. The details of six crore farmers and their lands will be 
brought into the farmer and land registries. Further, the issuance of Jan Samarth based Kisan credit cards will be enabled in five states. Shrimp production and export. Financial support for setting up a network of nucleus breeding centers for shrimp brood stocks will be provided. Financing for shrimp farming, processing, and export will be facilitated through NABARD. National cooperation policy. Our government will bring out a national cooperation policy for systematic, orderly, and all-round de development of the cooperative sec sector, fast-tracking growth of rural economy, and generation of employment opportunities on a large scale will be the policy goal. This year, I have made a provision of 1.52 lakh crore rupees for agriculture and allied sectors. Priority two, employment and skilling. Employment-linked incentive. Our government will implement following three schemes for employment-linked incentive as part of the Prime Minister's package. These will be based on enrollment in the EPFO and focus on recognition of first-time employees and support to employees and employers. Scheme A, first-timers. This scheme will provide one month wage to all persons newly entering the workforce in all formal sectors. Direct benefit transfer of one month salary in three installments to first-time employees as registered in the EPFO will be up to 15,000 rupees. The eligibility limit will be a salary of one lakh per month. The scheme is expected to benefit 210 lakh youths. Scheme B, job creation in manufacturing. This scheme will incentivize additional employment in the manufacturing sector linked to the employment of first-time employees. An incentive will be provided at specified scale directly both to the employee and the employer with respect to the EPFO contribution in the first four years of employment. The scheme is expected to benefit 30 lakh youth entering employment and their employers. Scheme C, support to employers. This employer-focused scheme will cover additional employment in all sectors. All additional employment within a salary of one lakh rupee per month will be counted. The government will reimburse to employers up to 3,000 rupees per month for two years towards the EPFO contribution for each additional employee. The scheme is expected to incentivize additional employment of 50 lakh persons. Participation of women in the workforce. We will facilitate higher participation of women in the workforce through setting up of working women hostels in collaboration with industry and establishing creches. In addition, the partnership will seek to organize women-specific skilling programs and promotion of market access for women SHG enterprises. Skilling program. 
I'm happy to announce a new centrally sponsored scheme as the fourth scheme under the Prime Minister's package for skilling and collaboration with state governments and industry. 20 lakh youth will be skilled over a five-year period. One thousand industrial training institutes will be upgraded in hub and spoke arrangements with outcome orientation. Course content and design will be aligned to the skill needs of industry and new courses will be introduced for emerging needs. Skilling loans